everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. I'm Paula Kimper. I am the director of the executive committee, the New York Opera Alliance. And we are really proud and thrilled to be putting on our second New York Opera Fest this May and June. And you'll be seeing some preview performances from that. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to uh, our host tonight, who is a man who had this festival as a dream. He had the Alliance as a dream, and he's been working on it for years. And he is the founder and host of the Indie Opera Podcast. Peter Zepp. Yes, I can sing in falsetto. <clears throat> so welcome to the kickoff of the 2017 New York Opera Fest. Um, we'll be honoring Lauren Flanagan for her, her enrichment of the opera community of New York City. So this year, the 2017 New York Opera Fest has been focusing on community. Um, opera companies put a lot of emphasis on how they reach out to their local audience and communities, and many of the New York Opera Alliance companies have been very successful at that. Uh, this year, we're encouraging opera companies to expand their idea of community, to include how we can be more connected with other opera companies and be more supportive of each other's work and become a stronger community. We're so proud to say that this year is even larger and more diverse than our first year. With 24 companies participating in the festival, we're creating 34 unique events all across the city. So no matter what kind of opera fan you are, from aficionado to the merely opera curious, there really is something for everyone. Uh, starting tonight through the months of May and June, the New York Opera Fest will bring opera directly to New Yorkers, performing in bars and garages, libraries and gardens, playgrounds and basketball courts, at the Met Museum and at BAM in Brooklyn, and even on a Vietnam era warship. The New York Opera Fest is your chance to get up close to opera and meet the entire diverse opera creating community. We really want to thank all of the newest New York Opera Alliance companies that are participating in this year's festival, including New Camerata Opera, who will be performing Peter Rabbit, uh, Light Opera of New York, I know some Light Opera members are in the audience tonight, who will be offering both The Island of Tulipan and My Song Goes Round the World, Volume 2, uh, New Opera NYC, who's presenting a fully staged performance of Rimsky-Korsakov's The Golden Cockerel, uh, Brooklyn College Opera Theater is creating Brooklyn Baby that features, <laughs> that features some of Brooklyn's finest, finest exports, John Musto, the Gershon Brothers, Harry Warren, and of course, Mel Brooks. And uh, two other new members, Opera Rocks and Sign and Sing, you'll actually see and hear uh, perform later in the program. So for all the details on the festival, please check out nyoperafest.com and uh, check your program for a bookmark that'll have the website on it and uh, follow that to more information. So tonight we're bringing you a taste of some of the diversity of the performances from this year's festival, starting with Regina Opera.
lots of opera mission does lots of Handel operas and all kinds of opera. Um, and this is Jordan, and we are on Tuesday, May 16th. We're going to do the complete William Bolcom's cabaret songs, which is in four volumes. And according to the composer, this is the first time that um, the complete set has been done by a countertenor. We're doing it at the Duplex Cabaret in the West Village. Grab a postcard outside. This is from volume two. We're just going to do one song. Hey, all right, there it is. Yes, no, keep clapping, that's great. I, I haven't heard that in a while. Um, this, uh, this piece uh, has a couple of names we've came up for. We've called it the, uh, the ED aria, the impotence aria, uh, the, leadless, the leadless pencil, I believe. Um, this is a character who is a veteran swinger who's at a swingers party in our piece, uh, Three Way, uh, Masquerade, Act Three. And, um, Things don't go well for Larry tonight.
part of myself. The part that lies there. Like a shrunken lump. <laughs> I can take that magic pill.
Wow, that was great. Um, Paula was saying backstage that uh, in this entire program, there's only one opera by a dead white guy. And I, I noticed there's a lot of great new stuff. Uh, Lauren, could you come to the stage? So why is it that every time I listen to something interesting, Lauren Flanagan's always in it? <laughs> For 30 years, Lauren has performed on stages around the world, from the Scala and Glyndebourne, or I should say Glyndebourne, to the Metropolitan Opera, and of course, New York City Opera. Whether you're familiar with her from live from Lincoln Center telecasts, motion pictures, or you have her on your favorite tracks and your playlists, you're aware of the extraordinary yeah, musicianship. No, it's actually, it is true. It's just so funny. You know, I'm a, as a conductor, I'm always looking for really weird, wonderful things to, to program. And so I buy these things, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Lauren. <laughs> uh, seriously, it happens a lot. Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, if, um, you're aware of the extraordinary musicianship and passionate performances that Lauren Flanagan has brought to life. With this year's emphasis on community, Lauren was an obvious choice. We are deeply grateful for her advocacy of living composers taking part in 10 world premieres and her tireless support of developing singers. Since she founded the Music and Mentoring House seven years ago, Lauren has provided hands-on mentoring and full board to hundreds of students who have learned by example about leadership, artistic excellence, and community service. We've all learned to expect more from a musician when we find out that they've worked with Lauren. It's true. Did you hear that? <laughs> it's true. In an audition, I go, oh, she's worked with Lauren. Let's see what she can do. Uh, the Flanagan's are down here. <laughs> the, the entire New York community is also indebted to Lauren for creating Comfort Ye, which is an annual music event to raise food and awareness for New York's homeless. Lauren. Yeah. Yes. We love having you at our rehearsals and seeing you in the audience. You are truly a part of our community, and we're thankful for your support and encouragement. And to uh, give the award. Oh, Lauren, <laughs> it's my honor and pleasure to present you with the New York Opera Alliance 2017 Service Award. It's just a token of our appreciation. You've given so much to all of us, and we're so grateful. What better than Anyone opera glasses? Opera glasses. <laughs> Has a little light too. Yeah. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hold that for you. Yep. Um, that was Charles. Oh, Charles is going to say All something. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So um, I'm just going to steal the stage for a few minutes. Thank you, Peter and Paula, for letting me do this. I'm Charles from American Opera Projects, and I'm so happy to say we have a long association with Miss Flanagan. And um, really, the shout out I want to give tonight is for when Lauren and I worked on our first world premiere, it was by Deborah Detell and Annie Finch, directed by um, the wonderful Anne Bogart. And shortly after, we were thrown together in some panel, and Lauren cozied up to me during the panel and said, what if you ran a school for me? And we'd call it, what did we call it? Uh, the character of opera or something like that. Oh, creating the dramatic character. Yeah, creating the dramatic, and I said yes, like I, I say yes to everything, if those people know me. And um, we did it, and tonight I just want those to stand who are here that have been Flanaganized. Who are the Flanaganized people? Yeah, stand up, guys. There's Leslie back there. And also, I just want to say one more thing about tonight, because um, one of the, you know, thinking man's diva, one of the most beloved American sopranos is going to sing the role of the most hated woman in America tonight. <laughs> that's that's the, the pleasure, the guilty pleasure I get tonight, is commissioning the last, hopefully not the last, but one of the last works that uh, you'll be doing, hopefully on a big stage. And Stefan... Uh, is not here tonight, but David Cody, the librettist, is here. David, stand up. Thanks.
Good evening. I think they're going to lower a screen at us, so I'll, I will chat briefly while they hopefully do that. Um, we are two-fifths of the founding members of Rhymes with Opera, which is a, a commissioning opera ensemble based here in New York. Um, we commission, produce, and perform exclusively new chamber opera. Uh, and this upcoming month, as part of the New York Opera Festival, we're doing a piece called Coping Mechanisms, uh, May 19th and 20th at the 24124 Bang Street Theater, if you're, if you're around. Uh, Coping Mechanisms explores themes of isolation and loneliness in a, in a more and more interconnected and crowded age. Coping Mechanisms is also uh, an improvisatory opera, so it's written for three improvising musicians and three classically trained improvising singers, uh, which it's worth mentioning, as of last year, Robert and I were not improvising singers. Um, so we've had a, just a tremendous experience, I think. Um, guided by Bonnie Lander, the creator of the piece, exploring specifically how our, our classical training can inform and create this, this vocabulary within this very new uh, genre of free improv. So this evening we're going to play uh, an excerpt for you. We premiered this piece at UC San Diego last month, um, and this will give you, I think, a good visual sense of what the piece looks and feels like. Um, and while that's playing, Robert and I are going to do Three to four minutes of free improv.
skirts, mini skirts, disc brakes, big track tapes, bucket seats, and wise who cheat. Youth culture, drug culture, culture shock, acid rock, wood stock, and doctor stock, coke, lose, ash, pot, penthouse, hustler, playboy with a beaver shot, triple X movies, Fury, Groovy, Central Air, no school prayer, peace signs, curse lines, see through blouses, lying spouses. Turn on, tune in, drop out, welcome home. See these color TVs, Gatorade, Roe v. Wade, women's lips, civil rights, Stonewall, strobe lights, Avery rugs, water bait bugs, space age laser, Ali Frazier, go go boots, leisure suits, no Sid Caesar, no frost freezer. Inflation, stagflation, confrontation. Angry nation, hip-hopping, what's up, shopping, polyester, wife swapping. Turn on, tune in, drop out, burn out. Welcome home. No Mickey Mantle, no Marilyn Monroe. No Sandy Koufax, no Sandra D. No RFK, no LBJ, no present day. I miss so much I can't catch up, I can't catch up. Every single fact I knew or thought I knew is different now. Everything has changed somehow. John Glenn, Neil Armstrong, astronauts, moonshots, Eris Rada, Patty Hearst, soldiers coming home, get cursed. Trad diets, Chicago riots, Watts, Newark, Brownsville, Bed Stuy, Mila High, kids can hide, men can cry, wives can lie, terrorists and the Munich games, boxers now with Muslim names, credit cards, fast food, music's vulgar, movies move. Thank <laughs> you. 